two, one. Happy Friday and welcome to another edition of On The Needle. So today I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. I had a hard time picking an album this time because I see that y'all really into the Tupac and the Teddy Pendergrass one that I did. So I thought, okay, what's next? Which one am I going to do next? And I decided to give a group a little bit of love because I've been doing uh, a few solo ones. The last group I did, I believe, was TLC's fan mail vinyl that I have. And so kind of in that same class of groups, because they came out around the same time, is Boys to Men and their debut album, Cooley High Harmony. So this is pretty hard to find on vinyl. Well, let me rephrase that. It was hard to find at the time. I've seen it more often now in stores uh, after I got it. But um, yeah, one of the greatest male R&B groups, I would say as far as harmonies go, it, they probably would be the greatest one. Um, a little bit about their legacy before we get into this though. So Boys to Men, I will be honest and say, I love the singles. Whoever was their A&R person, I mean, knocked it out of the park because they really chose the best songs from their albums as singles. But they were so popular in the early and the mid 90s that I kind of didn't pay attention to them until they started cooling off. When I started revisiting Boys to Men, it was when they came out with the song Four Seasons of Loneliness. And I was like, oh, this is bomb. I mean, of course they had other great songs before then, but that really caused me to dig into their discography and just see, okay, what other songs do they maybe have like deep cuts that I like that I may have missed over the years. And plus by the time the late nineties came, I was tired of Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. So <laughs> I kind of wanted to revert back a little bit to my childhood and some of the music that I had grown up on and not something that was so bubblegum pop. Um, Boys to Men, I feel like they were a pop group. I think a lot of times they get labeled as R&B and they are an R&B group, but Boys to Men is pop in my opinion, because once you sell that many records and once you sell that many arenas and you know things like that as they did during their heyday, it's a pop group to me, it's my opinion. But I'll step off my soapbox there. Now, I will say the group consisted of originally Wanye Morris, Nathan Morris, Sean Stockman and Michael McCary. So Michael McCary, I always thought he was the coolest one of the group because he didn't really say too much, but you know, he would come in with like the super deep voice. He was like, yeah, I know you didn't mean to do it, baby. I didn't do it. You know, like how he did on End of the Road. Um, he, to me, he made that song. And Wanye, Although he has a great voice and don't, y'all probably think like, why is he doing voice and men if he's hating on them? I'm not hating on them. I'm just calling out what I believe to be facts that even boys to men fanatics probably would agree with. Wanye, I just want to see him hit those notes without doing all the head shakes and the jerks and all that. Cause you know, he, he's good for, for one of these right here. He, <laughs> I, I ain't seen him do it yet. Y'all sent me the footage. If you seen him belting out a song and he did not do that, I'll wait. So, as I mentioned, Cooley High Harmony. Let's get into the album here. So, uh, one thing I did not mention, I did not realize about Boys and Men that I will have to give them credit for is so Dallas Austin was on, I think it was Vlad TV. Uh, this was a few years ago. He did an interview and he talks about, you know, his experience with artists like Brandy, Monica, TLC, and then, of course, Boys to Men. And he said the reason why he didn't work with them much after this first album was because of their attitudes. Now, something tells me that it may not have been the entire group. I'm not going to name drop and say who I think it would have been, but they started thinking, oh, well, you know, we can write like Babyface. We can produce, so we can do that. Babyface? <laughs> really? You No. Yeah. But again, I'm going to get off my soapbox. So one thing I did not know, though, and I do have to give them their props for this, is 
So let's, you know, get into this track list and y'all can kind of revisit this on the back if you forgot or maybe you're not familiar. It's kind of hard to see on camera because it's all in cursive, so I'll go through it. So Please Don't Go, classic. Love that song. Um, the song was arranged by Nathan Morris. As a matter of fact, Nathan Morris arranged the majority of this album, vocal arrangements. Wanye Morris also did vocal arrangements as well. Um, almost all of them wrote except for Michael McCary. I'm, I'm looking through the track listing to make sure I'm not saying anything out of turn. Um, yeah, I don't see it. I only see primarily Nathan and Wanye as writers and mostly Nathan. So, which leads me to believe that when we talk about finances of a group like Boys to Men, because, you know, everybody has their heyday. I don't care how big you are. Everybody is going to have a slump. So Boys and Men can still sell out shows today, even without a member. But, you know, they're not 1990s Boys and Men. And so sometimes I always wonder in situations like that, like how do these artists thrive and still have somewhat of a semblance of this lavish lifestyle after their heyday? This is why, because they actually did write a handful of these songs. And I will say Nathan Morris had a big handful in some of these songs. Uh, so as I mentioned, Dallas Austin produced on here as well. Um, and then also Boyce, I mean, not Boyce, I mean, Babyface, as I mentioned earlier, produced the song and wrote End of the Road. One of their biggest hits. It might, might be their biggest song. I don't know. Um, with End of the Road, I was kind of upset when I got this vinyl because it's not on here. So I had to think back and remember. So this came out in 1991. End of the Road came out, if I'm not mistaken, in 1992 because that was on the Boomerang soundtrack. So I wish I had that version on it, but hey, it's not. Still a lot of classics on here. Um, Please Don't Go, as I mentioned. Ooh, ah, that... That little countdown kickoff that they did, and then, you know, years later, fast forward, Beyonce even sampled from that. Um, which, again, we go back to these publishing checks, royalties, songwriting. Nathan Morris wrote that song, and so did Juan Ye and Michael Bivens. So if y'all don't know who Michael Bivens is, he's from the group New Edition, also from BBD, um, Bill Bill DeVoe. He discovered, essentially, boys to men. So, hey, I'm sure they all got a nice check from that song being sampled. And it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Uh, classic. Killed it. Um, Motown Philly is one of their best up-tempo songs. I I don't really think of boys to men as an up-tempo type group. Uh, there's a handful of up-tempo songs they have that I do like. Um, but I will say the first half of the, the A side of this album is mainly the slower ballads. The B side is more the up-tempo tracks. Um, Motown Philly, the other song, Under Pressure, was a pretty good one. Simping, Little Things, and Your Love round out the up-tempo section. And mm, I can kind of take or leave those, to be honest with you. Um, but Boys to Men is a classic group and again they're just a classic group period pop if you have to put them in a category and then secondary i would put them in r b uh, again just because of their massive success you know you have a debut album that sells i think at this point it's probably 10 million the second album i think was even bigger than that it sold over 10 million if you don't make another hit the bragging rights to say that your first two albums sold that many copies in a time where this was pre-streaming. So people actually dug in their pockets, you know, spent their hard-earned money to purchase 
a $10 cassette or a $15, $16 CD. So, it, you know, these are real sales. I'm, I'm sure the num numbers have jumped up quite a bit due to streaming and all that. But curious to know what you all's thoughts are on this album from Boys to Men and just Boys to Men in general. Uh, what are some of your favorite tracks on Cooley High Harmony? And somebody help me explain this. So coming soon, it says on this album, now all the Boys to Men super fans, I think one of y'all will be able to answer this question for me. It says the Yuppie Yup Alexander, no, I'm sorry, the Yuppie Yup Alex Vanderpool era. Sounds like maybe that could have been a hint at a second album. I'm not sure. But the interesting thing is, going back again to Nathan Morris, they all have these alias names on the back of the album. So his name is Alex Vanderpool. I don't know what that was about. I don't think it would have been a hint at a solo album that early in their career. Uh, Sean Stockman was known as Slim. Michael McCary was known as Bass. And Wanya Morris was known as Squirt. <laughs> That's funny. I want to know the backstory of these names. So again, if you're a Boys to Me a super fan, chime in because I some of this I'm unaware of. But that's my thoughts on it. And thank you all for tuning in. As always, um, again, thank you for the new subscribers this week. I ask that you continue to please subscribe. Uh, I have albums for days. I have not even really scratched the surface the little bit I have of all the vinyls that I have. So I'll continue to be doing these for a long time as long as y'all keep watching and commenting and leaving your thoughts. So peace and have a great weekend, a great safe weekend, and I will see you next Friday.